Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cybersecurity Meg, and I'm also really, really glad that you're here. So today, instead of talking about the CISSP, which is what my first two videos were about, I wanted to give you my five best tips relating to the CompTIA Security Plus exam. On my roadmap to getting my CISSP, I did acquire the Security Plus as a way of kind of garnering the fundamental and foundational knowledge that I felt was necessary to get the CISSP. So that's why I took the exam. I enjoyed the exam. I learned a lot from the exam and I'd like to give back to you guys. So hopefully you find this video to be informative, insightful, and helpful. As always, I organize my videos on my phone. I kind of take notes about what exactly I want to say and go over. So if you see me staring down at my phone, I'm sorry, I'm not being rude. I'm just keeping us on track so the video isn't a half hour long. So out of my five tips, my first tip relates to PBQs. And if you don't know what a PBQ is, it stands for Performance Based Questions. These are secular to CompTIA. And in the Security Plus, a PBQ could be anything from configuring an ACL or dragging and dropping, essentially anything that's not the standard multiple choice. So relating to tip number one, my thought process on this is that we're all pretty familiar on how to answer multiple choice questions, but not a lot of us have experience answering the PBQs. How I prepared for this, I wanted to make sure that when I got into the exam and was approaching the PBQs, that I didn't just kind of like quench up and get super nervous and throw myself off track for the rest of the exam. So I made sure to familiarize myself with what I could potentially be seeing on the exam. And I did this through several avenues. Um, just as a disclaimer, I'll put all of the links that I mentioned throughout this video down in the description. So if you want to check that out for resources, it'd probably be really helpful. Nonetheless, how I prepared myself for PBQs. One, I went to the Daryl Gibson website. He is the amazing author of the Get Certified Get Ahead book, which was my main resource, and I'll talk about that later in the video. But Daryl Gibson has some practice PBQs on his website that he walks through exactly how to approach them, kind of what PBQs are about, the strategy for dealing with them, and he provides the answers, of course. I believe he also has paid content on his website. I didn't pay for anything on his website. Obviously, I paid for his book. But I think if you wanted to pay for more PBQs, he does have a section where you can check that out. Second, I used Jason Dion on Udemy, his practice exams. And his practice exams have several PBQs in the beginning. Granted, the formatting of Udemy kind of limits what exact questions he can ask, so there aren't any drag and drop or any like ACL or anything fancy like that in his practice exams, but they did do a pretty good job at getting me familiar at how to best approach the PBQs. So in summation with PBQs, know that you're going to have them prepare yourself for them, make sure to familiarize yourself with the different kinds of questions you could be asked. And with PBQs, I know a lot of people say to skip them because usually they're presented to you at the very beginning of your exam. I didn't skip them myself and I didn't have an issue, but they are more time consuming than the rest of the questions, you know, just your basic multiple choice. So it would be a good idea if you find that you take a little bit more time in answering questions to leave the PBQs for the end. Moving on to tip number two, Professor Messer. He's a legendary figure in the world of cybersecurity. If you don't know him, have you been under a rock? Do you not have a computer? Like what's going on? Nevertheless, with Professor Messer, he hosts a study group, I believe once a month for the Security Plus, and it is done live. So there are people calling in from around the world asking questions. You can forward pass this, or actually I think it's at the end of the videos, but the main important part of this is that Professor Messer, during these study sessions, asks several questions, and most importantly, he doesn't just tell you why the correct answer is correct, but he also explains why the wrong answers are wrong. 
And it's really helpful, or at least it was for me, to kind of hear the thought process and the perspective from other people who were attempting the same question. Professor Messer kind of expands your knowledge during these. He helps you um, kind of analyze exactly what the question's asking, break it down, and then helps you to learn what the best answer is. So these are really great review sessions. They're free, obviously. So if you just go on YouTube and look at Professor Messer, then you can go back several months. I think I went back and watched like the last six months before my exam and they're really great. Also, it's good to change up your study habits instead of just reading or um, like watching a video. So it's nice to have a discussion that's a bit more active. Tip number three and Honestly, this is probably my most important tip. So as of right now, when I'm filming this, it's early November of 2020. And where I'm at, I'm in Europe. COVID is a complete and utter disaster. And it is for most places in the world at this point. Right now, I think the US is still struggling a lot with COVID. So probably regardless of where you're at, this is going to be applicable. But when I took my exam back in June, Pearson Vu offered the exam through two different means. So you could take it either online, like from your house, or you could go into the exam center. And I know for probably a lot of people now, since COVID's getting so bad again, they're probably canceling the in-person test taking exams and making everyone do online from home. Don't let that freak you out. It's okay, we'll get through it. I took my exam online, it was okay, it went smooth. So don't let that hold a lot of fear for you. But the tip around this is you need to essentially simulate your exam day. And what I mean by that is if you're going to be taking the exam from home and you know you're going to start your exam at 9 a.m., then I, a couple weeks ahead of time, would take a full length practice exam exactly at 9 a.m. And for my practice exam, I would wake up at the same time I plan to wake up on exam day. I would eat the same breakfast. I would do everything I can as closely as possible to mimic what I'm going to be doing on exam day. Why? Well, this has several like beneficial factors to it. One, it kind of reduce. well, for me, it might not be for you, but I'm a really anxious person. So for me, it reduces anxiety, it makes me feel a little bit more calm, less nervous. Two, it gives you kind of a muscle memory and a familiarity of the process. When we're more comfortable with things, we tend to be feeling more prepared and having that confidence in yourself is really integral to doing well on exams, I think for a lot of people. And three, it helps you expect what to know, how it's going to go, what's the flow going to be? Do I have enough time after I eat breakfast to calm myself down, watch like a motivational video on YouTube and then start the exam? So getting that familiarity of what your process is going to look like on exam day will be super helpful to you. That said, this tip is also applicable if you're going to be taking the test in person at an exam center. Right now, again, like I said, since COVID is unfortunately so bad, my exam centers, when I took my CISSP, required me to wear a mask the entire duration of the exam. So if you're going to be taking your test in person, First, I would recommend calling and seeing, hey, what's the rule for my exam center? Do I need to wear a mask? Do I need to wear gloves? What's the deal? And if you find out you need to wear a mask and gloves, then when you're taking your practice exams, I would wear a mask and gloves. That way you know exactly what it feels like. If you're not comfortable and you don't have a lot of experience wearing a mask for a long extended period of time, who knows how you're going to react, especially if you're nervous and your breathing might be a little bit iffy. Just try to do these things ahead of time so you can get used to how it feels and familiarize yourself with it. That said, also, if you're taking the exam in person, I would recommend the same thing I did for taking it online. Do your practice exams at the same time you'll take your real exam, eat the same breakfast, wake up at the same time. Follow the exam day pattern as closely as possible. Moving on to tip number four. 
This tip is more of a generalistic tip, but I still think it's a great one to include, and that is to be an effective studier. My main resource for studying was the Get Certified, Get Ahead book by Daryl Gibson. And this is a THICC book, y'all. Like, this is thick and it's overwhelming. I understand it. It's um an almost 600-page book. Granted, a lot of that is um, glossary and practice questions and explanations. Probably there's 300 pages, 350 worth of actual reading material for you. But when you're looking at this book and you're holding it in your hands, you're like, heck, that's a lot of stuff to have to retain and understand. So my tip for this is break down your information into reasonable chunks. Don't have super high expectations for yourself. Sure, it's great to study as much as possible, but once you hit a certain point, you just kind of need to step back, see what you've already studied, examine whether or not you're retaining the information, and analyze your studying habits. Is what you're doing to study effective? Is it helpful? Are you understanding the content? Can you speak to someone else about it, the topics, and hold a conversation? And to further on that tip, I personally like to study my weak areas first. So this book has 11 chapters in it, and each chapter covers something a little bit different, of course, topic-wise. So for me personally, before I took the Security Plus, this was back in June, my networking knowledge was like, not top-notch. And that's because I don't work in networking. Um, so what I did is I first approached networking. Now, if you read this book from chapter 1 through 11, pretty much like any other cybersecurity book, chapter 1 starts off with what's the CIA triad and accounting and auditing and just like the basics of cybersecurity, which for me, I know those like the back of my hand, like I got you. If I were to spend and exhume so much effort rereading what I already know and then get to networking four chapters later, I'm probably going to be burnt out by the time that I get to networking. There's not going to be as much room left in my brain to consume the knowledge that's already challenging enough to me. So for me personally, I always approach the most challenging topic for me first instead of waiting for it to come up randomly in the middle or the end of a book. If you leave your most challenging things until the end, chances are you're going to be a little bit burnt out already and that's just not good. So yes, definitely be an effective studier. Be honest with yourself. If you know you're not good with something, this isn't the time to be like, listen, Brianna, I'm really great at networking. Like you have nothing to prove to anyone here other than to yourself. And that is going to be passing your exam. That's how you prove to yourself. So be honest with yourself. If you're not good at it, then hammer it. Go ham in the book. Use all the different resources you can to garner as much information about your weak areas as possible. And that brings us to tip number five. So for tip number five, I have written down, join a Discord study group. And it doesn't have to be a Discord study group. In general, you could join any study group, but why I find Discord study groups to be so beneficial and imperative to studying for me personally is because they're generally 24 seven. Most of these discords have thousands of members from all over the planet who are constantly having educated discussions about the exam. They're asking each other questions. They're giving each other tips. They're giving feedback. They're talking about their exam experience. What went wrong? What was right? So this is just completely invaluable. When I was taking the Security Plus, I didn't know about Discord study groups. I only found the Discord study group when I took my CISSP, and now I'm a moderator for Certification Station. So if you are in need of a study buddy, which I highly recommend because I think conversing and discussing a topic is the highest form of showing that you have a solid knowledge about a topic, then please, please join a Discord. They're free. You can talk to whoever you want. You can just read if you're not comfortable with speaking. I've linked two down below, so if you want to check them out, I highly recommend it. 
And even though I said this would only be a five tip video, I do have one more tip. Sorry. <laughs> so tip number 5.5 is to watch a motivational or relaxation kind of meditation video before your exam. If you approach your exam and you're super frantic and nervous, you have really bad anxiety, then this is not going to be the most beneficial thing to getting you through the exam with a passing score. I have just gone on YouTube and I literally type in like motivation for exams and oh my gosh, maybe I should make one in a video at some point because these are so helpful and so valuable. They really stress the point that you've done the work, you've put in the effort, you spent the countless hours, nights, days studying, you didn't go to get ice cream with your friends, you made the right choices, you put in the hard work, dedication, and effort, and it's time for you to show that you know what you've studied. Like, this is just an opportunity for you to perform well. That's it. The exam's not anything to be afraid of. It's simply an opportunity for you to be proud of yourself and to show, share your knowledge. That's it. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. The Security Plus, it's not the easiest exam, but it's not the hardest exam. It'll be okay. We'll get through it together. If you have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. You can comment down on YouTube, you can add me on Instagram and DM me, whatever you're more comfortable with. I love discussing anything and everything with you guys, so if you just want to chill and have a conversation about cybersecurity or career development or something, then let me know. I'm always open and I'd love to get to know you guys better. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and that's it. Ciao!